Well, tonight we went to the GCW show, and the big news was the main event of the show was the Matt Cardona Open Challenge. So prior to this, they had the MDK gang and 440H doing a, a War Games match. That was pretty wild and crazy. So you had a War Games, there's a two cages, there's blood, there's tables, there's light tubes. They Bob literally Mark. had scaffolds above the cage. That was a cool So idea. these dudes are doing spots off the scaffolds. So my point is, is Spanish fly was the Spanish fly There was a off, Spanish fly off the off the deal. Uh, through tables and yep. maybe was it a door, glass? I thought. Wasn't it a door? Well, I am short and everyone was standing. So if there was anything happening in the cage, I couldn't see it. But if there's anything coming off the cage, I could see it just fine. So I saw the crazy stuff coming off the top. I don't even know what I just I saw dudes fly off the top and then they vanish and you just saw shit flying all over the place. But anyway, so they do this the, crazy. Um, they 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 must have broken like five hundred thousand light tubes in the. Oh match. yeah, they're they're everywhere. So they do this this crazy war games match, and then Matt Cardona comes out and he's going to do an open challenge for the GCW title. They had fourteen hundred fifty. That, that's that's so, so. I was sitting there. It's just fourteen hundred. Well, hold on. Let me finish okay. the story. Okay. So he comes out for this open challenge, and you have to know that something's going to happen. Okay. Something. Yeah. All right. So they they did the old, all right, my opponent is someone very famous here from Chicago, and he calls out a clown. Frank the Clown. Frank the Clown. You know Frank the Clown, right? I don't know personally Frank I know, the Clown, I, I know but personally. I know of Frank the Clown. <laughs> yeah, okay. so, so the funniest thing is Frank the Clown starts coming out, and I thought it would be patently obvious that everyone has to know that this is not his actual opponent. I, I thought I, I thought I, it was obvious. I swear to God, because I was standing there, people started walking out. And I'm watching them. And it wasn't a lot of people. It was maybe two dozen people. But I watched them, and I saw them go, and I thought, maybe they're just going to concessions. But in fact, they kept going, and they left the building. And I thought, you people are going to be very upset in about 10 minutes now. And uh, sure enough, uh, the clown gets beaten up. And then a he bunch gets, of he gets he gets pinned real quick, like yep. in seconds. Hit belt with shot and then spitter belt. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, out come a bunch of druids, and the druids get in the ring, and Cardona starts beating all of them up and everything like that. And they had a they had a gimmick druid, the one that you thought was going to be the main druid, but he left, and he starts beating up the other ones. And then there's one druid left in the ring. And, and he, of course, he was behind, and he, yeah. He starts taking off his hood. Well, he didn't take off his hood. He, he, was, he did the dance. He, he did. Yes. He, he stood there, and I don't think people knew who it was, but then he starts doing his John Moxley mannerisms, like yeah. the little, the John Moxley walk, and they all, as soon as he did that, like, everyone knew and went crazy. Yeah, and actually, he didn't take off, he hit the Death Rider first. Yes. And, and then, then they, they, they went really crazy. Went, they really went crazy when he hit the move. Yep. Yeah. And then finally he reveals himself as John Moxley in the place. It's it's on my Twitter right now at Brian Alvarez. You can see I, I got the the moment where he takes a thing off and uh and the place just goes crazy. And he won the GCW title and yeah. beat yeah, Cardona. With the, with the, with the uh, you know, Paradigm Shift, Death yep. Rider. Yeah. And then out comes uh, Nick Gage. And so it's going to be John Moxley and Nick Gage for the GCW title. And uh, holy smokes, these people went crazy. Atlantic City. Atlantic City is going to be October, the, uh, October 9th or something like that. Yeah. 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 Well, that's big. It's big that they, uh, you know, that they give him, that, that Tony lets him do those dates. Um, but yeah, they had 1,450 pe people there. And I mean, it was jammed. And I'm, you know, I'm watching this right after watching the greatest wrestlers in the world <laughs> in New Japan. And barely more people for a freaking stadium show as in this, you know, building a block from our hotel that's like a minor league hockey ring. Not even a minor league, but like yeah. this youth hockey Dude, ring. they ran they ran Black Label Pro in the afternoon. And uh, and they drew 800 yesterday and a little under that today. And the hockey the hockey arena is is split in two. But there's a uh, there's a barrier in between the two areas where they're going to run. So GCW got moved to the larger area because it was just going to be packed. So they had to take the whole ring apart and rapidly bring the ring to the other side because they had to have two rings for war games. And they still, I guess, oversold because there were, there were people... 
I guess originally they were going to turn everybody away, and then they ultimately let them in. But the fire marshal had pretty much said, there's no more people allowed in this building. Then how did we get in? Uh, Dave, it's top secret. Help <laughs> So we were in there. We did. We managed, we were not turned away. No, we we didn't. I got to in get as in, media. That's how I got in. You got in yeah, as media. Yeah, we got in as uh, kindling or something. <laughs> I don't know how we got in. But anyway, we got in. We got in. It was packed in that place. Yeah, and it was hot, and those people were going crazy. It was. A, it was a really wild old atmosphere it's very different atmosphere than you get from um any you know any other group it was it was weird to me because it's like it's really not ecw but it's the grand the crazy grandchild of ecw because it's it's like it absolutely felt when i was in there like you know 20 plus years ago when i would go to the ecw shows um you know the same type of fan um just you know, and again, just wanting, you know, in ECW, they just wanted tables. In this thing, it's a lot more than tables. There's, they just want, you know, blood on blood and, and you know, the stunts. They want, this, this is a crowd for stunts. And the people, the wrestlers gave them up, you know, throughout the whole show, they gave them stunts and, um, you know, um, yeah, they're, someone's going to get hurt doing them, but, but uh, they're, they were crazy stunts. So I asked you on the we're live pal uh youtube video we did about nick gage and being a baby face and i'd never seen him live and so i got to see him and it was like uh the, the call and response with the fans the mannerisms that he uses with the fans and they chant everything that he wants them to chant before he asks them like it was a, it was really crazy to see his connection. He did with a great that connection. You know, He's yeah. a great connection with the audience. The, yeah. the thing is is uh, and and part of it was because I was in the ring for the American Rana show, but that had also about fifteen hundred people there. And the difference there was the way that they had the ring set up on two sides of the ring. The fans were like they were they were pounding on the ring apron, like that was where ringside was. It was touching the ring. And then the other two sides, they couldn't touch the ring because they wanted two sides if people wanted to do dives or whatever. But, I mean, they were right up against the ring. And that reaction for him at that show felt crazier than it did tonight. And tonight they were going crazy. But this guy, I mean, you know, I mean, when he did AEW, there were people that knew him and he got a good babyface reaction and, something, and, and that sort of thing. I think that if he were a regular in AEW, and they which and they're not going to let him do all of this stuff like every time he goes out there, but it's like Dave says, if you can get over somewhere, you can get over anywhere. This dude can connect with these fans. Yeah, you know, it's like Orange. Like, Ca- it's like Orange Cassidy on the Indies. He's a hero you, to them. You know, or Orange Cassidy. The first time I remember, you know, when I would watch him on the Indies, and and he just got over. Now I I didn't think that that would translate into national television, but in fact it did. Uh, but yeah, I mean. Um, you know, the, I mean, I remember Moxley saying like, you know, they, WWE wishes they could get someone with that connection. And they, you know, Becky Lynch kind of does, of course, they're turning her heel. Well, she did. <laughs> she did. She did whatever. You know, oh, that's another thing. So, the, so Becky Lynch, um, it's like, you know, she's turning heel and they're cheering her, of course. Of course and, they are. And, and, and it's, you know, I can't say they were booing Bianca, but they were kind of you know it's hurting bianca without a doubt maybe in the long run it won't but so far it definitely has not helped her the one thing though is and we sort of wanted to go to this show i think assuming moxley was going to do something how did we um, know this <laughs> that's all i heard like, we got to go to this we got to go to the show something big is going to happen uh but there was there was a clear decibel level when he showed his face and you know and he was in the and he yeah, that, was big, that was the biggest pop like I that thought. that was a, a a pop that was much bigger than than nick's but nick was able to just keep the fans going for such a long time but when moxie came out it was a much bigger pop it was really well, loud well, you, in, you know, in that building the, su- the surprise pop you know what i mean it, but i but i guess what i what i what i mean is i sort of sense that the fans kind of knew he was going to 
be there and just popped for the moment rather than that they were truly surprised. I mean, maybe the people who walked out. I mean, the people that walked should, out were definitely been truly surprised. surprised. Yeah, but like I, I didn't, I didn't sense, I didn't sense that the crowd knew it was going to be Moxley until until they saw him do the body because they react. You know, I don't. I think that I don't even think I, when I was feeling the crowd when that all those druids were in there. Like I'm thinking, okay, one of these guys is is the gimmick guy, right? I didn't sense that the crowd saw that one of these guys was the gimmick guy until there was a point where they're all out, but the gimmick guy is standing in a position where you know he's somebody. And I think at that moment, it's like, okay. But I didn't sense that they knew who he was until he did the first mannerism. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. I, I, was, uh, I was sitting for a while with somebody that... Uh, I, did, I shouldn't say they should have known who the mystery guy was, but I was actually surprised they didn't know and they didn't know. I, I think most of the fans didn't know. Yeah, they were like, oh, man, you know, don't go after the cage because, like, there's a big surprise tonight. I'm not sure who it is, but there's a And I was like, okay, well. So so we were sitting, or I was sitting next to our friend Nick, who's a giant GCW fan. So he, he knew everything was going to happen. Filthy Tom was behind us. He was pretty sure what was going to happen. Um, but I don't even really follow the GCW storylines, but I remember the video where Cardona came out pretending to be Moxley. Yeah. And so that was very clearly related to what happened tonight. So I thought it was like, like once if, if that you, happened, I was like, oh, okay. If you closely here's... follow GCW, I think you probably would have been one of those fans who thought there was a decent chance it could be Moxley. But I also think that because, I mean, one of the reasons they drew so many fans is because AEW was in town. Yeah. And so I think there are a lot of AEW fans that, have a cursory knowledge but aren't following closely enough and they were like oh man you know gcw's in town we're gonna go to the show and they would not have known everything that had gone on in the storyline to then presume that moxley would be a likely secret guy so but anyway it was wild yeah i i'd never seen any of that stuff live and it was quite the spectacle i i caught myself flinching very in like the few times the the light bulbs or the light tubes were breaking the and you and they the broke glass 400 times i know but that that's what i mean which is the first few i was like flinching and i was like kind of blocking but then it just happened so often and you're like okay none of these people are getting hit with these shards or whatever so we'll, we'll I probably got hit fine. with them but they were so tiny they didn't hurt or nothing yeah. but they flew into the crowd you know but people were picking up pieces and taking yeah, them yeah pieces of <laughs> Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.